What is good, Keezy Gang, man? We have rappers who destroy the career with one mistake, man. No cap. Let's get it, bro. I'm actually excited for this one, bro. Honestly, they got 6 9 right here on the front, bro. That's probably the first person I think of, like him and Tay K. But um, let's get to this, y'all. No cap. A successful rap career is extremely hard to obtain, yet very easy to destroy. One mistake, one bad album, one tweet could start a ripple effect that leads a rapper to fade into irrelevance. Today we are going to look at the stories of rappers whose careers dwindled for reasons they likely could have prevented. Starting oh with Superstar God. Pride, a rapper who had the fast- Now this guy right here bro, I remember his freaking freestyle bro. His freestyle was crazy gang, I'm not even gonna lie bro, he had the draw like with just the mic and was going crazy, y'all. I'm not even gonna lie. Shit was fire, but I don't know what the hell happened with him. I don't know what the hell they about to say. Fastest and most ironic rise and fall of all time. Many of you heard Superstar Pride briefly in 2023 when his song Painting Pictures went yeah. viral. <laughs> However, it wasn't necessarily viral for the song, but rather his obscure mullet style haircut. The crazy part about this track is that it was originally uploaded in 2020 and went unnoticed. And mama, don't worry. Then two years later, when he uploaded the live mic performance video Yo. to painting pictures, it also <laughs> fell on deaf ears. It wasn't- That mullet is crazy, bro. I ain't never seen a nigga with a mullet, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I ain't never seen a nigga with a full-grown mullet, man. That's crazy. Until five months after the music video dropped, February of 2023, that Pride casually created a TikTok, posted the music video snippet, and it blew up. The first clip he posted Damn, got 10 million. million views. The second one did over 40 million views. Bro got the Sonic haircut. Bro looked like he got <laughs> screamed at. Bro's haircut was 50% off. Nobody was. Yo, they talk about bro. <laughs> They talk about bro look like he got screamed that is crazy bro like, <laughs> if y'all ever watch dragon ball z you remember when uh y'all remember when goten and, and and uh trunks merged and they had to scream to get out of the uh the little dimension they was in fighting boo that's how he got screamed at <laughs> you got go tanks go tanks screamed at that nigga. <laughs> was talking about the song, just his hair. Then a viral trend emerged of people imitating his video with something ridiculous taped to the back of their head, which could not be outdone when someone managed to get an entire airplane strapped to their head. The opening line- Oh my god! The whole airplane though is crazy. And Mama Don't Worry was also getting stuck in people's heads, which led to the song amassing 160 million streams on Spotify and over 30 million on YouTube. Uh -huh. Painting pictures shot up to number 25 on the Billboard Hot 100, <laughs> and every major label got into a bidding war trying to sign him, but he mm. sided with Steve Stout and his independent structured music label, United Masters. Okay. And he wanted like $5 million from a label, and when they didn't give him $5 million, they offered him three. Mm. He's like, if it ain't five, I'm not signing it. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, what? Pride let his ego get the best of him. Honestly, honestly, that's probably the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my whole life. <laughs> this man could have signed three million dollars. Changed his whole life, his family's life, everyone's life. Three million dollars. And he turned it down because he wanted five, nigga. Even if you got the five, taxes wasn't having you keep the five, my boy. So you should have forgot about, like, bro, take the three, my nigga. What the, bro, what, bro? Yo, what? Refusing $3 million for wanting $5 million. Three weeks after refusing the record deal, he was arrested for murder. A Mississippi oh, rapper is charged. Damn! Damn! <laughs> murder, the big M. God damn! <laughs> with murder in Pinola oh, County. 20-year-old Kadarius Pride, known as Superstar Pride. The victim, Marcus Wheatley, was Pride's barber, likely responsible for his signature hairstyle. Wheatley's grandmother said Pride stormed into their house and gunned him down in the backyard. Currently, Pride is being held without bond and doesn't have a trial set. He killed this man because he gave him the mullet. He killed this man because of the mullet. Oh, my... Oh my god. Oh my god. That's bro though, yo. Barbers is the bad job. Yo, I'm telling you, bro. If you a barber, man, you in shaky grounds, bro. You fucked the wrong person's haircut up, man. It's gonna be up, bro. Look at this shit. 
I'd known a superstar pride. The victim, Marcus Wheatley, was Pride's barber, likely responsible for his signature hairstyle. Wheatley's grandmother said Pride stormed into their house and gunned him down in the backyard. Currently, Pride is being held without bond and doesn't have a trial set. Nobody knows what oh, happened man. or why it happened. But a rapper going viral for his ridiculous haircut in February, then allegedly murdering his barber <laughs> a few months later after denying $3 million. All right, all right. There's nothing funny. There's nothing funny about murder, man. But it, it's just the situation, y'all. It's just how it went down, bro. All right? Like, let's get that done. It's how it went down, bro. Is the most insane. Like, the man killed his barber because of the haircut, bro. Like, come on. Insane self sabotage I have ever seen. And if you thought Pride's story was a poetically ironic form of self sabotage, meet Chance the Rapper, who once famously Not said, I met Kanye West, I am never going to fail, but still managed to fail. Ch my nigga, how did he fail, bro? This is what I'm not going to rock with, bro. Chance the Rapper has had multiple awards, bro. The man has been billboard like. Like, what the, like, come on, bro. Come on, Acid Rain was, uh, Acid Rap was crazy, bro. This was not, this, like, this was crazy. Famously said, I met Kanye West, I am never going to fail, but still managed to fail. He's Chance the Rapper's 2013 mixtape, Acid Rap, was universally praised by hip-hop fans. His raspy voice and sprinkle of soul combined with Fire. his youthful, positive energy made Fire. this project a masterpiece. Tracks like Coco Butter Kisses and Favorite Song. React to Cocoa Butter Kisses, gang. I ain't even gonna cap to you, bro. Chill. ...have aged like fine wine, but Chance was in no rush to capitalize on his buzz. He worked on his next mixtape for three years. He had the whole city of Chicago rooting for him and garnered support from the biggest artists in the world, including Kanye West, who uh -huh. featured Chance on his 2016 album, The Life of Pablo. Chance's part on Ultralight Beam is one of the biggest highlights of the project. Coloring Book was his 2016 mixtape that served as the perfect follow-up to Acid Fire. Rap. Chance's Fire. cadence, soulful lyrics, and euphoric beat selection was Fire. unlike anyone else in hip-hop at the time, especially on tracks No Problem and All We Got. He earned a Grammy for Best New Artist. I gotta see what they're about to say. I gotta see how he ruined his whole career, bro. I gotta, I gotta see, bro. And crazy. some people even believed he could give Drake a run for his money, but then he blew it. And I'm gonna blow you away when you hear about today's sponsor. Lately, I've been obsessed with fantasy sports, and that's where today's sponsor comes in, Underdog Fantasy. Underdog is the easiest way to play fantasy sports, but not just- We got our own sponsor, y'all. Y'all, if y'all want y'all own customized hoodies, man, make sure y'all go check the link in the description, bruh. You get customized hoodies. You see my Keezy Gang hoodie. I mean, Keezy Gang jerseys right here. You know what I'm saying? And you can get hoodies. You know what I'm saying? I meant to say jerseys, y'all. I, I fucked up. It don't matter, y'all. Come on, let's get this. Let's get through this. Let's get through this, man. Promo code PatrickCC for a first deposit match up to $100. It makes the NFL even more interesting for me. Kings, so rep your team and make your picks with Underdog. Starting with a track called Groceries, a corny TikTok song that was heavily marketed on Triller to capitalize on the whoa dance craze. The song went viral, but when fans criticized it on Twitter, his responses would put a nasty stain on his reputation. People have different tastes and that's fine, but the way you're talking to fans who have been with you since People have different tastes and that's fine, but the way you're talking to fans who've been with you since since 10 day is disappointing and that ego reflects the quality of your newest music. That is crazy. What did the last one say? I hate to do it to him, but Chance the Rasper grocery song is one of the least pleasing things I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, 2019, you can't think of anything else that was that was least pleasing than that? <laughs> like what? Stain on his reputation. People have different tastes and that's fine, but the way you're talking to fans who have been with you since 10 days is disappointing, and that ego reflects on the quality of your newest music. Eat it. You are a spoiled oh child God. who thinks artists are making music for you. I never intended for you to find or like anything I made. If I knew you existed, I would have tried my hardest to keep you from being able to enjoy it. Now go eat a dick again. Then Chance over and over again told the fan to eat a dick. This interaction- <laughs> Oh shit! Oh shit! Alright, 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 alright. Oh shit. Yo yo that's yo yo I, I I agree with part of what Chance said though. You feel I me, mean? bro? These artists aren't making music for everyone, bro. Some of these artists, bro, just be making music for their own therapy and for their own for their own joy when they're younger, you feel me? And then they just so happen to everyone like so happen to get a hit song, you know what I'm saying? But mostly it just be for their own enjoyment. Like, you know what I mean? If no one was to listen to him, I'm sure Chance would still be dropping music, bro. You know what I'm saying? Even if Acid Rain ain't blow up. Even if, you know what I'm saying? Some people with music, it's just in them. You know what I mean? 
Christian was a far cry from the positive and wholesome Chance the Rapper fans loved. Then he dropped his debut album, The Big Day, on July 26, 2019. Okay. The Big Day was a reference to his wedding day, which he was planning during the creation of this album. Chance mentions his wife and family over 20 times on the record, which Damn. became a huge meme. And while his intentions were pure, the album simply was not good. I am genuinely feeling like a strong zero on this record. Fans hated the project as well, and were quick to let him know. On Twitter, Chance would block anyone who poked fun at him or said anything negative about the album. With the oh influx God. of hate, he responded with extreme measures. I'm getting this crazy feeling that people want me to end it. These desperate tweets combined with his lazy album would lead to him canceling his 32 city arena tour, saying that he was instead going to focus on spending time with his family, which again sounds understandable, but it was a lie. The tour was actually canceled due to quote, historically low ticket sales. According to his now ex-manager Pat Corcoran, Chance fired his manager then blamed him for fan disappointment in the big day and underwhelming fan support for its associated tour. Corcoran oh, would go on to file a lawsuit in November of 2020 against Chance the Rapper for breach oh, of contract, stating that he is owed over $2.5 million in reimbursed expenses for supporting and promoting Chance's career, an additional $3 million for unpaid commissions, and 15% of Chance Chance's net profit across all business earnings. The lawsuit also revealed that Chance started working on his album in February of 2019, which was only five months before it was released. His manager knew there was not enough time for the creative process that was involved in releasing an album. Chance's recording efforts were compromised by unproductive and undisciplined studio sessions, procrastination, oh and lackadaisical God. effort, which explains why there are terrible lyrics throughout this record. If you blink it, you might miss it. You gotta click it or tick it. Life is short as a midget, but mine's a little LeBron, and how could we forget? Bro, <laughs> bro, what? Get peanut butter jelly with a baseball bat. Peanut butter jelly with a peanut butter jelly. Y'all ain't ready for the jelly to break y'all back. Chance let his own ego squander his career. He couldn't just admit that he made his fans wait three years for a bad album that was rushed out in five months, and the way he responded to them on Twitter was just childish. From here, <laughs> all his hype died. On the other hand, if he stepped it's out of the funny. limelight to genuinely focus on his family, that's respectable. Maybe that's something we should celebrate rather than see as a downfall. But Chance right. wasn't the only rapper whose Twitter fingers started their downfall. In the case of OG Mako, he pretty oh. much forced everyone to hate him because of his tweets. In 2014, OG Mako had a ton of momentum after after his song You Guessed It went viral on Vine. This track was unlike anything we had ever heard at the time. Before mumble rap took over, nah, we had yeah. OG Mako screaming insane ad libs yeah, over the most. He was he was actually wildin', bro. You when this song came out, bro. Honestly, bro, I, like it Simplic made me hate it. It made me hate it, gang, because like it, you couldn't you couldn't run from it. You couldn't even you couldn't build a fucking doomsday bunker and hide from this motherfucker, bro. No cap hard-hitting trap beat. He had a darker, more rock-like aesthetic and even called himself not a rapper, but a rock star. The song reached number 90 on the Billboard Hot 100 and he could even be credited with inspiring many rappers after him. It definitely inspired Keith Ape, who just released a track called It G Ma that sounded suspiciously similar. <laughs> just listen nah, to- that song, that song was crazy, bro. It G Ma. Yeah, that song was crazy, bro. No cap, this song was stupid. Them at the same time. OG Mako tweeted, I'm aware of the Koreans that, that, that mocked me and took my sauce. I'm not impressed. I'm not inspired. I think it's kind of lame. To each his own. Mako even accused Beyonce of stealing from him in her 7-Eleven music video. If you look bro, at them side- don't, 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 Bro, don't do that, bro. Oh, he wildin', he wildin' now, he wildin'. By side, he may have a point, but Mako was developing a reputation of a bitter, egotistical rapper who complains on the internet. He randomly took shots at his collaborators and label mates, the Migos. Mako felt the okay. need to tell everyone that Skippa to Flippa invented the dab dance that the Migos were using in the song Pipe It Up, to which the Migos replied, the Flippa man is Migo family. OG Mako, let's see you set a trend. Then Mako said, half the rap game has already bit one of my flows or ad libs. Let me see them out album sales. Meanwhile, OG Mako has never had a gold album, let alone the dozens of platinum records the Migos have. Then he oh went after Lil God. Uzi when XXL tweeted, Lil Uzi is rap's newest rock star. He tweeted, He's dudes just don't talking. just- He's just- this guy just be talking now. Alright, OG Mako just be talking. Like, this is crazy.
become rock stars. Somebody got to show you the way. Stop playing with my name. With a picture of Uzi at an OG Mako show on stage behind him. Then Academic said, you paved the way for Uzi? Then Mako replied with dozens of tweets over the next hour trying to explain why he is so influential and Uzi was stealing his sauce. What? He also randomly took shots at Future. I love Future, but I also understand Future has destroyed countless lives by making it cool to be a drug addict. People looking up to loser attitudes because this generation is afraid to strive for anything. It's y'all's fault all this lame ass shit is possible. Again, he may have a point here, but fans replied to Mako calling him a hypocrite since he raps about the same stuff. But Mako claimed he was dumbing down his music to blow up. You guessed it was not <laughs> luck. It wasn't an accident. I made Isn't it crazy when you gotta dumb down your music to blow up? Isn't it crazy when you gotta really take steps back? Just to, just to really get you like, it's crazy, bro. That, that's nuts dumbest song I possibly could on a beat full of bass and knew it would blow. I manipulated over 40 million minds and counting based on the exact same principles that I'm preaching. Who's what? more qualified to say this? Now Mako has always made more conscious, focused music with substantial lyrics. Like Jason, Michael, Freddy, and Idiot mean after your civil syllable war niggas should have been prepped before. But a lot of his music was just mediocre, boring trap. Get the cat, get the cat. Get the bag, get the bag. Hey, get the cat, get the cat. Also, if he claims to be such a genius, why wasn't he able to do it again? During his brief moment of popularity, Mako facts, consistently facts. released music on SoundCloud, but nothing sounded anywhere near as innovative, fun, or interesting as you guessed it. Oh his downfall God. was easily due to dissing rappers for absolutely no reason, nonstop complaining on Twitter, and trying so hard to take credit for the success of anyone else. Was he an innovator? Absolutely. But he spent too much time talking about how influential he was on Twitter, Yo. rather than trying to create a legacy to maintain this man goes so deep bro like like not og mako but who made this video bro he is doing his homework y'all like he's doing his homework for real like <laughs> what the fuck like i ain't gonna lie to y'all bro he's wailing right now like he's really digging in like digging in deep to get stuff out like he's saying shit i ain't never heard about chance the rapper and saying stuff i ain't never heard about fucking uh the first person like no cap his career. But what happens when the reason a rapper blows up is the same exact reason why they had a downfall? On July 26th, 2016, just a few weeks after his 16th birthday, SoundCloud rapper TK and five others conspired to rob a 17-year-old drug dealer, Zachary oh Belote. The crew broke into the house around 10 p.m., and the robbery went wrong, which led to the drug dealer's friend and roommate, Ethan Walker, being fatally shot. TK oh admitted gosh. during the police interrogation that he was not the TK, shooter. TK, like I said, bro, TK is probably one of the most, like, like one of the most famous people to really F their career up, bro. I promise you, bro. Like my whole high school, everybody was going TK, bro. TK was crazy. He was fired. That song, The Race, was hard. I'm not even gonna lie. But he really, he, bro, this man really fucked his whole career up, bro. Like, it's just crazy. And his wasn't just one mistake. Like, it was a few mistakes. On July 26th, 2016, just a few weeks after his 16th birthday, SoundCloud rapper TK and five others conspired to rob a 17-year-old drug dealer, Zachary Belote. The crew broke into the house around 10 p.m., and the robbery went wrong, which led to the drug dealer's friend and roommate, Ethan Walker, being fatally shot. TK admitted during the police interrogation that he was not the shooter, but was there looking for drugs and money. He had been released from custody pending the trial and was placed bro, on house you arrest nigga, you don't even bro i hate when people get in there bro and they just start rapping bro i hate when people get inside a police station bro and the first thing they do is just start rapping bro why are you rapping in the police station bro like no cap bro what don't make you want to call a lawyer what don't make you say anything about a lawyer what make you, what don't make you just be quiet like you know what i'm saying i would have took that trip to jail just to get out and be free to this day like <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I would have took that trip to jail, gang. I'm, I'm gonna lie to you. With an ankle monitor. For the next seven months, TK sat in his room, making music, releasing it on SoundCloud, and built up a following. With no money for a lawyer and quickly approaching the hearing for the murder, TK infamously tweeted that he was tired of house arrest and the police were going to have to hunt him down. <laughs> While on the run from the police, TK was very active on social media. Fans posted pictures and videos of him in public. But TK and his friends were desperate for money. He how robbed don't a you how don't you find a man that's how don't you find a man that's active on all social media? Is and ran away like how don't you find that man like you feel me like you know where he you know like he's posting crazy on social media like i would have figured that y'all would have found that man no bullshit 
65-year-old man named Skip Pepe at gunpoint in Arlington's Craven Park. He then attempted to rob a cameraman named Mark Anthony Saldivar in a Chick-fil-A parking lot. Mark began screaming for help as he tried to escape. Then Tay Kay hit him with the car before getting out, fatally shooting him and driving off. San Antonio police connected Tay Kay to the murder due to surveillance footage and posted wanted signs around the city. Tay Kay saw this as a marketing opportunity, posting Yo! pictures and videos with the wanted sign. He then dropped a song called The Race on SoundCloud which essentially told the story of him being a fugitive, robbing and killing people while on the run from the hey, police. That song was fire, bro, and it was facts. Like, look, look, Keezy Gang, you know I like real music. Anyone that's Keezy Gang know I like real music, bro. If it's real music, bro, I'ma rock with it. This was a real song, gang. The nigga was really doing it. <laughs> After filming and releasing the music video to the race, Tay Kay was captured by U.S. Marshals in Elizabeth, New Jersey. The shockingly true story led to the 17-year-old exploding in virality. The race secured hundreds of millions of views on YouTube, reached number 44 on the Billboard Hot 100, and hashtag Free Tay Kay became a movement supported by some of the biggest rappers in the game. He even signed a $700,000 record deal, but none of it mattered because he was behind bars. And in 2019, he was given a 55-year sentence after being found guilty of murder and three damn damn smoked him god holy cow counts of aggravated robbery. Obviously, Teike's downfall could have been prevented if he simply did not commit these heinous acts. But as bad as it sounds, none of us would even know about him if he didn't actually rob and murder people, then make songs about it while mocking the police on the run from the law. Sad Rap fans say. glamorize this type of behavior because the music is, a lot of the time, violent and derogatory. So if you're gonna rap about it, fans want you to be about it. But the fans won't be the ones sitting in the jail cell. Pooh uh -huh. is an example of someone who was heavily rewarded for his violent music. His song Back in Blood featuring Lil Durk was essentially a song about killing your enemies. This track would that, reach that, number that 37 on the Billboard Hot 100 and secured himself- fire song. That song was fire. I'm gonna get it back in blood. Mm -mm. That, that song's fire, bro. I ain't gonna lie as a promising new talent in hip-hop, but at this peak of his new career, he got arrested. Pooh Shiesty and his crew were at the King of Diamonds strip club in Miami, Florida. Allegedly, Shiesty had money taken from him which led to major commotion in the club. Security acted accordingly and escorted Pooh Shiesty out of the club, but he forced- 40,000, bro? I'm sorry, I would've been wildin' in there too, bro. I'm not even gonna hold you, bro. 40,000, I'm wildin' in there from him which led to major commotion in the club. Security acted accordingly and escorted Pooh out of the club, but he forced his way back into the club and accidentally fired a handgun at a working security guard. Pooh turned himself in on June 8th, 2021 Damn. and had his hearing the following day, where he would be denied bond. He would later be sentenced to five years and three months in prison on April 20th, 2022. Damn. He could have easily that's, just left that, the club. That's and not that bad. That's not that bad. Five five years off of shooting. So that's that's not that bad, bro. Because he he'll be able to come out five years from now. Pooh Shiesty is still gonna be relevant, and he's already been locked up for like what three years, two years, bro, something like that. Three or two years, bro. You feel me? So he got like probably like two, three years left. You know what I'm saying? And he maxed out. Like you feel me? So like Pooh Shiesty gonna be very mel very well gonna be real relevant when he get out, bro. Not even gonna lie, bro and let others go handle the money situation. But maybe he felt the need to live up to his back and blood lyrics. I got my own fire, don't need security in the club. If you haven't noticed, rappers and shootings seem to be a very common trend that leads to their downfall. Tory Lanez is no different. However, many people still question if he is actually guilty of being the shooter. In 2020, Tory Everybody Lanez was at the peak of his career. His feature on Jack Harlow's What's Poppin' reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100 while fire. objectively being the best. Fire, what's poppin'? Man, it is not yet. Fire, come on. Banger, banger. If you agree, comment. No cap. Verse. His album, The New Toronto 3, debuted at number two on the Billboard 200. He broke the record for the most live viewers in an Instagram Live during his quarantine Damn. radio show during the pandemic. However, on July 12th, 2020, he was arrested on a felony gun charge while out with Megan The Stallion after attending a small party at Kylie Jenner's didn't house. He, didn't he like shoot? Yup, he shot her in the foot. That's crazy. Yo. <laughs> That shit is nuts, bro. Look was awesome. And there's a lot of story behind this, bro. Honestly, like there's a lot that goes on behind this whole story with uh Tory Lanez and um Megan. Form that Megan had cut her foot on broken glass. Then three days later, she changed her story to say that she was shot in the foot. Then one month later, she said this. Yes, this nigga Tory shot me. You shot me. 
and you got your publicists and your people going to these blogs lying and shit. stop lying social media immediately took megan's side tori remained silent about the allegations but so she was able to make these claims damn near two months after the situation already happened. So everyone was saying this and that. She she said that she slipped on glass. Didn't they? Just, someone said that she, that she cut herself with glass and shit like that. And it took two months for her to come out and say that this man shot her. It's crazy. Responded with lyrics on his album, Daystar. How the fuck you get shot in your foot and don't hit no bones or tendons? How the fuck your team is trying to paint me as a whole menace? The illusional, like how that 1942 from Kylie House still got you talking crazy. Oh as well as God. also rapping about why he hasn't been nearly as vocal as Meg. Think I'm finna talk about an open case for some likes? Tory Lanez was charged with one count of assault with a semi-automatic firearm and what? one count of carrying a loaded, unregistered firearm in October of 2020. Although Tory claimed he was being blackballed by the music industry, his career continued to thrive. He released four albums independently, which would all garner hundreds of millions of streams. Hell he received yeah. praise from LeBron James as well as dozens <laughs> of other mainstream acts. Fans Tory believed Lays, if it wasn't for this Tory case, problem, he would have been toe to toe with the biggest rappers in the game. But once we finally got the information from this trial, we would end up with more questions than answers. On July 12, 2020, Tory Lanez, his bodyguard, Megan Thee Stallion, and her friend Kelsey Harris were attending a small gathering at Kylie Jenner's house. Megan testified that she lied to the police about the glass, lied to doctors, and basically lied about the entire situation out of- Like, like, bro, bro, like, come on, bro. Since when does this first statement don't mean nothing no more? Like, since when are they just gonna let this- Since when are they gonna let her just completely change up everything she has said the first time? And then, and then she said, oh, he shot me in the foot. And all this shit ended up holding up and this man in jail. That shit is crazy, bro. It's crazy. I'm not even gonna lie. The sequence of events sounds ridiculous. You feel me? I'm not even gonna lie to you. Fear. Her new story was pretty simple. She said that they had an argument. She exited the car. Tori leaned out of the passenger side door, said, dance, bitch, and shot her from 25 feet away in the back of the foot. Then Tori ran up to her apologizing and she got back into the car so they could give her a ride home. The cops arrived when the neighbors reported the gunshots. Tori chose not to testify and defend himself, which he would later regret. Kelsey, Meg's friend, testified that Tori was trying to hook up with Kylie Jenner and Meg tried to convince him to leave the house. Meg was upset that Tori didn't want to leave, so she got into the car with Kelsey and drove almost all the way home before realizing she forgot her slipper and went back to Kylie's. They grabbed Tori the second time after Kylie allegedly told them to leave. In the car is when Tori admitted that he and Megan had been in a romantic relationship. Kelsey was shocked because Megan was the one who hooked up Tori and Kelsey in the first place. Kelsey what? also admitted that this was not the first time Meg had backdoored her when it came to men. Now we have a love triangle. And this is how the argument started. But Kelsey pleaded the fifth when it came to speaking about anything regarding the gun or shooting. The government offered her immunity, so she couldn't be charged with any crime even if she admitted to it. She still refused to speak. There what? was one witness, Sean Kelly, who saw the altercation from his balcony after being awoken by the arguing. Sean said he witnessed Kelsey get out from the back seat, open the front passenger door, and start physically fighting Megan in the front seat. He also said that the muzzle flash from the gun was closest to Kelsey. Much of his testimony was ignored because he couldn't identify the people by name since it was dark he only said big man small man and two women nobody admitted to oh my gosh bro this shit is crazy bro hearing the words dance bitch besides megan there was gunshot residue on kelsey's hands and tori's hands also after this night kelsey and megan stopped being friends after being best friends for seven years when tori was initially jailed he called kelsey and apologized multiple times to her i know she's probably never ever going to talk to me ever again but bruh i just want you to know I was just so drunk. I don't even know what was going on. I'd never do some shit like that. Regardless, that's not gonna make anything right and that's not gonna make my actions right. But I'm deeply sorry for that. I never nah, even- Nah, 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 nah. This can't be right. Nah, nah. Tori's hands. Also after this night, Kelsey and Megan stopped being friends after being best friends for seven years. When Tori was initially jailed, he called Kelsey and apologized. Bro, bro. Oh my god, bro. I feel like I feel like people are literally retarded, bro. Like I feel like people are literally dumb as hell, bro. There's literally no reason. There's literally no reason for this. Like what? You called her on a jail phone, nigga. I'm taking a lap. You called her on a jail phone, bro. Admit 
to everything on the jail phone, my nigga. You dumb ass. Oh my God, bro. Some people, bro, some people's stupidity and common sense don't run, does not run through them, bro. Like common sense is like, it's not common, bro. This shit is crazy. This man on the jail phone. Jai's multiple times to her. I know she's probably never ever going to talk to me ever again, but bruh, I just want you to know, I was just so drunk. I don't even know what was going on. I'd never do some shit like that. Regardless, that's not going to make anything right, and that's not going to make my actions right. But I'm deeply sorry for that. I never even moved like that at all. People speculated Tori was apologizing for sleeping with both of the women and causing chaos. Others see this as an obvious admission of shooting the gun. Some people think it was Kelsey who was angry and shot Megan. Some people think Megan was the one who accidentally shot her own if you have a lawyer, bro, the first thing the lawyer is going to tell you, bro, is when you hop on that phone, bro, do not talk about anything, bro. Don't talk about anything on that phone, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's the first thing your lawyer is going to tell you. And honestly, bro, you should know that already, bro. When you hop on them jail phones, bro, the first thing they be saying to you, bro, when you got to go through the whole typing drone and everything, is this is being recorded. Like, and monitored. This is being monitored and recorded. So you are being hurt. Like, you're, they're listening, bro. And they're writing shit down, gang. You know what I'm saying? So, like, nah, bro. People just be, oh, my, mm, -mm bro. Mm, I wish I could call Tori up right now. Like, yo, nigga, like, if I know him, I'd be like, bro, you dumbass nigga, bro. You dumbass nigga. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Foot. Some people think that Kelsey pleading the fifth was her attempt to try to save both of them. But at the end of the day, the jury decided he was guilty. And because of that, Tori was sentenced to I would ten take that. I would take her plea because she already have immunity. So she could say whatever she wanted, bro. Her plea in the fifth probably was her trying to give him some leeway to try and get out of this. You feel what I'm saying? Because she, I, I feel like she could have really just laid it on. I'm like, yeah, this, this, that, this, 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 and that. You feel me? And he probably would have got double the time. You feel me? He probably got double the time, but her playing the fifth probably helped him out, or it was probably an attempt on helping him out, bro. I'm not even gonna lie, bro. That Tory Lane situation just pissed me off, bro. All right, <laughs> I don't think we got any six nine in here. I don't think six nine got brought up at all. We just seen pictures of six nine. Um, yeah, y'all. Honestly, I, I can agree with the. I can I can agree with the list. The list is pretty agreeable. I could add a few more people in there if I wanted to add a few more people in there. But uh, Keezy Gang, if y'all have any other people who y'all feel like. Ruin their careers with one mistake. Definitely add them in the comments. You know what I'm saying, and we can talk about it, gang. You feel me? I do answer my comments, so we will talk about it. No cap. Uh, Keezy gang, this was it, bro. Rappers who destroyed their careers with one mistake, man. Honestly, it was interesting. It was interesting to me, and I rocked with it. So, it is what it is, man. Y'all stay safe. Enjoy y'all day, and I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I'm out.